Hey Financial Warriors, welcome to the show and in this video I want to give you a full explanation of Kamala Harris's tax plan, at least what we can get from the information on her website and from what she has said at rallies and in interviews. So if she wins the election, you know what to expect. First off, Kamala has said that no one earning under $400,000 per year will pay more in taxes. This makes me assume that she plans to renew most of the tax cuts to the tax brackets in Trump's 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which expires at the end of 2025, all except for one. The 37% rate would go back up to 39.6%, which is what it was before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act came into effect. And that rate is only paid by people who earn more than $400,000 per year. The next rate down, the 35% rate, is also paid by some people who earn over $400,000 a year, but also by people who earn less. That rate kind of goes across those income brackets. So I'm guessing they wouldn't change that one. And that one rate didn't change, actually, in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act anyway. It was 35% before 2017, before that was brought in under Obama. Then if she's not gonna charge people who make less than $400,000 a year more in taxes, I am guessing she will also have to renew the 20% deduction for qualified business income from pass-through businesses like S-Corps and LLCs. There is a chance that she may not, saying that that is business income so it doesn't count under her $400,000 a year thing, but strictly speaking, income from those types of businesses passes through to your personal tax return and is taxed at personal rates. So if she really wants to keep the promise about $400,000 a year, she needs to renew that. We'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, let's keep going. On Kamala's website, the first thing she talks about is increasing the child tax credit to $6,000 for the first year of a child's life. My plan includes giving a tax cut, including $6,000 by expanding the child tax credit for the first year of a child's life. And she also plans to bring back the COVID era increased child tax credit amounts of $3,600 for kids from one year old to five years old, and then $3,000 per year for kids over six. So that's obviously great news for people who have kids. I mean, that's the whole reason I had kids, to get those sweet tax credits. Okay, that's a joke. But yeah, I remember those COVID days, a credit of $3,600 for my little one and 3,000 for my older daughter. It was great. And I guess it can help increase our dropping birth rate by encouraging more people to have kids. So I'm all for it. Next, we have the earned income tax credit. This is a tax credit you get when you're on a low income and you get more of it if you have more kids too. On her website, she words it as if this credit doesn't exist right now and she's bringing it back, but that's actually not the case. It still exists. I believe she just wants to bring it back to 2021 levels for families without kids. It was higher in 2021 due to a COVID era extension. So again, positive move if it cuts people's taxes, but for this one, why not just increase the standard deduction? Then people won't pay the tax, have it processed by the IRS, and then sent back to them through the credit, okay? Much more efficient. Just increase the standard deduction for people on lower incomes. All right, let's move on. She wants to get rid of tax on tips. Eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. That's a good policy. Wonder where she got that. We are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. So obviously Trump said it first, then she matched the policy. It is a smart policy because a lot of people who get cash tips probably don't even declare the income anyway, but now they can without getting taxed and it'll increase their income reported on their tax returns, which means they will be able to get approved for bigger mortgages, have better approval odds for certain credit products, etc. And for those that were reporting their tips, well, they can just pay less tax now. So a good common sense policy either way. Next, she wants to give you $25,000 towards a down payment on your first home. Now this one draws a lot of mixed opinions since it could just lead to an increase in house prices by an average of $25,000 per house. Since if sellers know that everyone now has an extra $25,000, then why not just raise the price accordingly? But I'm guessing it will be limited to quite a small group of low income people. So it might not affect the market as a whole. Just lower end home prices perhaps. Then there's also the problem of if the person who gets it wasn't financially ready for home ownership in the first place, will $25,000 fix that? You may see more foreclosures as a result. But hey, if she does it, let's see how it works out. Now we have a few more tax increases. 
She wants to limit 1031 exchanges to $500,000 in profit. Ooh, that is shots fired at Mr. Trump. Since the 1031 exchange is one of Trump's favorite ways to get out of paying taxes when he sells a piece of real estate. You can pay no tax as long as you roll the money into the next deal on a comparable or larger piece of property. Then she wants to raise the long-term capital gains rate to 28% on income over $1 million. That would also affect qualified dividends. We will tax capital gains at a rate that rewards investment in America's innovators, founders, and small businesses. So here's the detail. If you earn a million dollars a year or more, the tax rate on your long-term capital gains will be 28%. Not as bad as Mr. Biden's plan of 39.6%. So while I don't support it, it's not the end of the world and won't affect the average person since the income level is so high, $1 million per year before it kicks in. Then two more tax increases she wants to do. One is raising the corporate tax rate to 28%. It's currently 21%, which is the rate that Trump set in 2017. That was lower than the previous 35% under Obama. Would be a negative for businesses, but may raise tax revenue for the country as long as businesses choose to stay. Then lastly, we have a 25% tax on unrealized capital gains. And this one, I would just say is a comedy tax proposal because there is no way it would ever happen. It won't get through Congress. And when you start thinking about the logistics of it, you realize that it is just not doable. Like Sweden tried it in the late 70s and it was repealed in the 80s. Imagine sitting on a piece of real estate that you are told has gone up in value, but you don't want to sell it. Yet you now owe several thousand dollars or even $10,000 or more in taxes on it on that unrealized gain. Do you borrow the money at interest against that real estate to pay the taxes? Then what if the real estate market goes down the next year? Do you get the taxes you paid the previous year returned to you. It would also cause a frenzy of selling in the stock market the end of every year as people needed to liquidate their capital to pay taxes. As soon as you start to think about it, there are so many problems and that is probably why pretty much all countries in the world only tax realized capital gains. But I wouldn't worry about that one. There is no way it's getting through Congress. So guys, those are the major tax policies in Kamala's tax plan. The theme of her policies are, I would say, government action. She doesn't just lower taxes. She gives people tax credits against taxes they've probably already paid, which means the government still needs to process the money and give it back to them. So less efficient, in my opinion, than just lowering the tax rates at the lower end. But hey, maybe you like the proposals and maybe you think that the no tax on tips, the $6,000 for your newborn baby or the $25,000 for your first home would be a big help. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. All opinions welcome. And if you wanna see my video on Trump's tax plan, it is on screen now. You can click it and check it out. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.